What's up guys? So I'm facing a bit of a problem. Uh, I have my GameCube here and whenever I try to load up a game, I'm just gonna just try and do it with Wind Waker here. It starts up, I can hear the disc spinning, but you can then hear the disc stop spinning and it reads as if there's no disc. So I can hear the disc spin up. I have checked the position of the lens after it's, after it's done its thing and it has definitely moved. So the carriage is not the problem. So what I'm thinking is I've done a little reading before and I've heard that the lens can get out of focus and it's not getting enough, it's not a focused enough beam to actually read the disc. So I know that there's a potentiometer on the board in here that we can use, that we can adjust to change the intensity of the laser. And that's about the only thing I can figure that's still the problem unless the laser has actually given out. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this bad boy apart and we're gonna find that potentiometer. We're gonna make that adjustment. We're gonna make that adjustment and we're gonna go and see if that fixes my problem. So let's put you up here and let's get started. All right, this doesn't seem like it'll be too difficult of a fix. So, as long as this is the problem. So, first thing we're gonna wanna do is turn this over and we're gonna take these four screws out right here. Let's go on and remove these panels. And get you your screwdriver. Much like everything else, Nintendo does like to make things difficult. And it appears you know, that is a 4.5 millimeter game bit driver in order to get this thing out. I have a flash an image across of that across the screen right now. Small enough to have to get down in here because that's better. Yes, it is. Good. Get those screws out. One, two, three, and four. Put those right there. And then very gently, we just lift this top piece off. And we can set this to the side. So the next thing we're gonna wanna get out of the way is the controller port. That's just clipped on right here. And then we have to get this ribbon cable here free. It looks like it might just pull out. Yeah, it does, it does just lift right out. So now, controller port's free. And you remember the video I made about the Sega Dreamcast battery? I'll put a link to it right here. Well, if you need to replace your GameCube battery, which you will at some point, it's actually right there. But we can set this to the side. So what we actually need to adjust is on this piece right here, but it's on the underside of it. So we now have to get the drive out of this. I don't think it's gonna be too hard. It's just, it's a lot of screws. You see, you got one, two, three, four, five, it's like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you gotta get under this fan here as well. So hurry right for that. So now we've gotta get these tens. What is that? Okay, well that's that's a little better. I, I guess I don't have to, didn't have to take the fan out, but let's see what happens when I take these loose. Okay, so the fan didn't actually have to come out. If you took out these two outer screws here, this entire um, setup here would come out. And just to make this easier on myself, I'm gonna actually wanna put the fan back in this. That way I don't have to fiddle with that when I go to put everything back together. And then we'll just plug this guy back in and pretend that I never took it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we took the back plate off as well. We'll just move that out of the way. And now we want to get the rest of these screws out. We already got two of them out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's four here as well. One, two, three, four. That's on top of the memory card slot. And there's one, two, three, four around the back. So get all those loose and your drive should come right out. top of the memory cards, the memory card slots, and you want to just keep those together as best you can and set them to the side. 
And then this should just lift right out. Right like that. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, there's a little plug in here that goes, that sets down in this. And so if you're needing to change your disk drive, like if it stops spinning like one of my, like my childhood GameCube did, I'm going to have to do this to that one as well. And but you could probably stop, you should be able to stop here because you should get this entire unit whenever you get a new disk drive. Since we're messing with the laser, this is actually what we need. So we can set this to the side. Now the next thing we want to get off is this shield right here. And there looks to be about six screws, six rather, rather small screws holding it in. So let's get those off and we'll be able to actually do what we came here to do. And there is the main control board for the disk drive. So what we're actually gonna be adjusting is this right here, that right there. That's called a potentiometer and it controls the intensity of the laser. And so that's what we're wanting to adjust. You're gonna need a very fine Phillips bit screwdriver for that. Very fine. But the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to measure the resistance across that potentiometer because that's what we're actually wanting to adjust. That's actually how we adjust the intensity of it. A multimeter is fairly inexpensive. You can get one at most hardware stores. They run, a, a, an okay one runs about 30 bucks. That's what all, that's all I got. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the resistance, which is these here, these ohms here. We're going to measure the resistance across this potentiometer. So you see now that I'm measuring it, you see how it's reading. I have it, I have it set to reading 2000 ohms as my base. And so you see how it's reading 0.252. That means it's reading um, 250 ohms of resistance, which is a little high. So the acceptable range is 150 to 250. So we wanna bring that down probably to around 180. Let's just give that like a tiniest of turns. I went the wrong way. <laughs> and so as you can see, it doesn't take it doesn't take hardly any movement to adjust this potentiometer to where we need it to be. It's a it's a fine movement. There we go. I want to bring that up just a little bit more. I'd like it to be closer to about 180. There we go, 182. That's where I want it. And we can reassemble this guy. We're not gonna reassemble it fully. We do want to just test the disc first, but we'll see what happens. So let's do that right now. just enough to put a disc on there and just make sure it's gonna actually like, you know, work. So there's three things we gotta keep an eye on whenever we're actually putting, turning this on like this. We need to make sure the fan stays in place. We gotta make sure there are these little black tabs right here, which would close with the, which would be held in place by the door. So that's how it tells whether the door, whether the lid is open or closed. And then we actually have to press the power button here. Let's, Put our disc in place. Hold our fan there. Let's do that. And let's see what happens. And would you look at that? Hey, me a bit further in the future. Uh, so after doing a little bit more reading just to make sure I did everything right, uh, I learned that the potentiometer on the D DL001 model, which is what this one is, because you can see it has the uh, two ports on the back, the AV port and the digital port. Resistance in that potentiometer is supposed to be around 400, 450 to 600 ohms, not 150 to 250 ohms. It's 150 to 250 on the DL-101 models 
which is the newer version of the GameCube that doesn't have the digital port. So that tells me that this laser is, is starting to go bad because this one that's supposed to be at 450 to 600, I had to tune it down to 180 to get it to even work. So I will have to replace the disc drive in this at some point soon, but I don't have to yet. And we'll do a video covering that when I do finally have to. So the DL-001 model of GameCube, which is the original run of the GameCube, which has the two plugs on the back here. It comes from the factory at an ohm range of 450 to 600, whereas the DL-101 model of GameCube, which does not have that digital port, it only has one port on the back of it, is, comes from the factory at 150 to 250 ohms. And the general idea is to, if you have to do an adjustment to this potentiometer, the general idea is to lower it just enough so it starts to read the discs again. Otherwise it'll be running too hard and it will burn out the laser. All right, perfect. Since we confirmed that it is working, we can actually now take and put this entire thing back together. So let's do just that. say it again. Be gentle with the ribbon cables. They are quite fragile. One important thing that I forgot to mention, whenever you're putting the actual like lid back on, Make sure it's open whenever you uh, set it on top of the console. The little black pegs back here that tell whenever the lid's open or not, their default is to the lid being open and that's where they rest whenever the case is off of it. So if you put the lid back, if you put the top back on with the lid closed, it will kind of lock it in place. So don't do what I did. Make sure your lid's open when you put it back on. All right, so now that everything's back together, I wanna to give it another test to make sure that it's going to work exactly as it did just a minute ago. Game boots, and it's registering a memory card. Perfect. And there we go. That's the way to adjust the intensity of the laser or to calibrate the laser in your Nintendo GameCube if it ever stops reading discs. So long as you can verify that the disc is spinning and that the carriage is moving, then that is probably the issue. Hopefully that's able to help some of y'all in the future if you ever encounter this problem. And that's gonna be it for me for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to bringing even more videos like this to you guys as the days go on. Thank you guys so much for coming back and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one y'all. I want to get my electric drill here to take care of this because there's so many. <laughs> so let's... It helps if I turned on the power power strip that it's plugged into. Because your boy here didn't plan ahead and get his multimeter out of his desk before he put his camera in the way. Now before I put everything away, I'm going to test it one more time just to make sure it... Well, that's not good. <laughs> and that's why you test.